Hi and welcome to Skane Studio. My name is Kristen. Uh, you can find me online on Ravelry as K10 and on Instagram as Skane Yarn. Uh, this is episode number 55 and it's a Thursday today, June the 29th. And you can probably hear by my voice that I have had a cold. <laughs> I've been sick yet again. Um, I got a bit of a head cold, which was last week, but it's still hanging around. So. I'm hoping that uh, my voice holds out. If not, I'll just pause and come back. It's not a problem. Um, anyway, how are you guys? Hope you're all well. Uh, it's very rainy here in Coffs Harbour today and um, yes, yeah, quite overcast. So I'm also hoping that the lighting is going to be okay. It looks all right from what I can see on the camera, but we shall see. Uh, so just to get into it, um, we have a few knit alongs going on at the moment. Uh, we have a sweater knit along running till the end of August, so still quite a bit of time. Uh, the sweater knit along is a skein knit along only, so skein yarn only. Uh, we have a prize from Made by Ganache on Ravelry. Uh, stuff piled up everywhere. Uh, this is she sent a bag as a prize I showed this last week but I'm going to show it again I'm oh, not last week last podcast um, it's a beautiful sweater bag huge loads of stuff in there um, so thanks to Yvonne for this for the gift of oh, prize <laughs> um, so that's up for grabs and also I am giving away a sweater load of yarn, a winner's choice of base and colorway. Uh, so yes, that's the skein sweater knit along and like I said, it ends at the end of August. Um, I won't be here by then because we will be uh, traveling to Greece. So um, I'm guessing Kylie, one of the moderators, um, it was her idea for the sweater knit along so hopefully she'll be able to draw a winner for me. I'm sure she will. Um, the next knit along is the Skein Sock knit along, uh, and that is running till the 19th of July, so uh, still a couple of weeks. Um, we have some great prizes for that as well. We have two skeins of yarn that were sent by Miss Click Clack. Um, this is, is it the Nookman's. I think it's the Milkman's Horse. Hang on. <clears throat> Not very organised today. Yes, Milkman's Horse Worsted, which is a superwash merino. That's it there, and her um, Etsy address is at the bottom. This is her card. Seriously, um, Kelly has one of the best Instagram accounts. You should go and check her out. Uh, you can find her on Instagram as Miss Click Clack, but um, I think her and her husband do quite a bit of traveling and um, she just posts fabulous photos and of course of her yarn as well. So this is Melbourne Black, it's still in the plastic, but you can see that there. And this is Meow, so same uh, Milkman's horse. Worsted, and I'll be giving those away separately. And we also have just one sec, it dropped on the floor. I just got to pick it up. <coughs> we also have three skeins that were sent by Hannah of Circus Tonic Handmade, and these are from her past club. On, which the theme was butterflies. Um, so this is the bright oak blue and that one's pretty much, I mean I love them all but that's my favourite. Uh, we have Cairns Birdwing which is this gorgeous green and Tailored Emperor. And these are all on her Jubilee sock base which is a superwash merino nylon um, 
425 meters in 100 grams and they're gorgeous and they will each be a prize and I'll be giving away a uh, winner's choice of sock yarn uh, winner's choice of base and color so if you're knitting socks and you cast them on I can't remember when we started this it was a few weeks ago check it out on the show notes but if you've cast them on since then uh, come and join us and uh, all you have to do is just post a finished uh, picture finished object picture in the prize thread and you couldn't be in for a prize and basically the rules are is that you knit a pair of socks uh, with any uh, hand dyed sock yarn that you have in your stash um, the more the merrier because it's so great to see um, hand dyed yarns knit up uh, so yes come and post them and uh, yeah. I think that's everything yes so uh, finished objects I do have a pair of socks that I was knitting for the sock knit along um, it was just a vanilla pair of socks but I cannot find them anywhere I took them into work to photograph them um, but I don't know where I put them I thought I bought them home but maybe they're still at work I don't know they just disappeared but it was um, a scribbly gum colorway it was our MCN sock and uh, I kind of I knit them up mainly as a shop sample so most of the knitting that I've been doing for the past couple of weeks has actually been for the shop because I do a lot of knitting um, of different colorways to sort of show how they knit up um, so yeah a lot of the knitting that um, I've been doing has been sock yarn because we've had a few different colorways that have come out that are kind of interesting the way they knit up so I wanted to sample them um, so let's just get into that uh, I've been knitting on two pairs of socks and I have these in my lovely give me a crown bag and I have three um, pairs of socks actually stuffed into this bag <laughs> this is what comes to work with me so the first pair that I've been knitting on is um, oh my gosh, oops, uh, is the is this top draw sock? Yes, top draw sock base, and this is the um, Ia colorway, which is O I A. It's actually uh, a place in Greece. Haha. Um, it's on Santorini Island and it's where you go to see the sunset so when I dyed this yarn years ago um, that's what I thought about when I looked at the color so this is one of our old dip dyed colorways and it's basically dip dyed colorways are just two colors and the yarns dipped into it and it's sort of the main colors on top and then whatever color is the next color that I dip into um, no, actually there's three coloured layers. The first one's on top, then the second one merges into the first, so it's sort of, uh, is a new colour, second colour, and then the last one is like a dark colour that comes out at the end when I put the last colour in. Anyway, it, this is how it knits up, sort of micro stripe. And if it's not knit in a sock, if it's knit in a shawl or something bigger, then it usually pulls. But in a sock it kind of makes this nice little pattern. So yeah, this is a sample knit for the shop. Um, that's it in the cake. It's very bright and they're fun. Really fun to knit. Uh, the second yarn again is another sample um, sock that I'm knitting for the shop. And this is a recent one that I cast on. We have um, next week a shop update where I'll be um, offering quite a few of our crazy colorways which is a two-tone color one side is one color one side's another color usually with a little bit of um, speckling um, so again it knits up into micro stripes so I just wanted to show people what that looked like it's only very small at the moment hopefully in the next couple of days I'll have a bigger sample 
But that's it there. You can see the plain green at the top is the main colour and then um, the other half of the skein is, I think it's, it's, it's just white but I, I speckle it with pink and purple, which you can see there. And that's it in the ball, in the cake. And this is uh, our everyday sock base, which is a new base for us. It's actually got more um, nylon in it than our other sock yarn, so it's 20% nylon and 80% um, merino. And it's quite a, I've shown this on the podcast before, it's quite a lofty yarn. It's a two ply, so it knits up really, really nicely. I'm really liking it. And actually, these needles, funnily enough, I don't know where they came from, but they're slightly smaller than these needles. So my, my normal sock needle is 2.25 millimeter, which is, I think, a US one. But this one that I found in my bag in my uh, with all my needles in it it's actually smaller again so I'm not quite sure exactly what size it is but it's really nice it's knitting up into a really nice cushy uh, fabric and the best part about it is you know when you um, when you knit in a magic loop and you have you know your two needle two needles coming here and then you get that ladder which I normally get. Um, where is it? There it is. See that bladder down there? I'm not getting it with these needles. Maybe because they are slightly tighter? I don't know, but it's just amazing. It looks great. So I will be trying to find out what these needles are and getting more of them. So that's my work in progress for my socks. So like I said, these are sort of more shop sample knitting. I also have my apple blossom socks in there which I'm <coughs> knitting um, again out of our everyday sock and that was um, a curious handmade uh, Helen Stewart pattern apple blossom um, but I haven't really I haven't knit on them this week. Okay, but my main um, uh, works in progress, which I am desperately trying to get done in time, is my uh, diary by Anchor Strick. And if you've been watching the podcast for a while, you've been seeing this project on every podcast. It's a big one. So. Uh, this is knit for my mother-in-law, Sue, who will be here this time next week. So I have to get the, I have to get it finished and blocked and all nicely done by the time she gets here. Uh, I have, last time I showed you I was onto the sleeves. Well, I have finished one sleeve. And last night I picked up for the second sleeve. And I'm just starting the sleeve decreases. So this one sleeve took me three nights of knitting. So hopefully this will be done in the, in the next couple of days. So I'm pretty much, I've abandoned everything else and I'm knitting on this to get it done. Um, I've mentioned Paul's parents live in Western Australia. So I don't, we don't see them that often, maybe twice a year. Um, so... Uh, yeah, it's not like it's easy to give this to her and I don't really want to send it in the post. I really want to give it to her and see uh, what it looks like on and she actually, um, I've mentioned this before, but she, uh, last time they were here, which was this time last year, um, I was going through Ravelry and she had mentioned that she would love to have a cardigan. I was wearing one of my hand knit cardigans and she was admiring it and I said okay well if you want one I'll knit you one just choose something from Ravelry or choose a couple that you like and I'll just pick one. So she did and this was one of them and I, I was really intrigued actually to knit this pattern. Um, so yeah that's how that came about. Oops. Looks like I dropped a stitch there, but I haven't. It's just a joining. 
Um, so the yarn that I'm using is Skein Yarn. It's uh, Voyage DK and it's the um, lichen colorway which is nice and speckled but sort of not in your face speckled. Neutral sort of color. Um, and I've tried this on and it fits me nicely. Uh, it is quite long for me, but I know that Sue, that's what she wanted, so yeah, we, we shall see. So I'll tell you how it goes next time I talk to you. And yeah, I'm really enjoying this. And like I've said before, I actually wouldn't mind knitting one for myself, but the shorter version. Okay. Sorry, I just dropped something on the floor. So, uh, I've also been doing quite a bit of sewing, <clears throat> and I have mainly been doing t-shirts, which is a lot of fun to do. Um, I've been, I have this pattern that I bought recently from Grainline Studio, it was actually Indie Stitches, which is a shop, Australian shop online where you can buy independent patterns and that's where I bought this one um, and it's called the Lark Tea <coughs> excuse me so there's four different necklines there's four different sleeve types so yeah it's, it's, it's a basic, very basic pattern uh, for a beginner but I tell you what the uh, t-shirts that you get out of it are really really nice they fit really well um, so I've been mainly doing this oh, it's blowing out a bit this one here which is the boat neck um, which doesn't require a neckband and I started sewing I, I used to sew a lot before I started knitting and then I gave up on sewing and just continued to knit so I, I do have a bit of experience with sewing not a lot but um, just to get back into it, I wanted something really simple, so I chose the boat neck t-shirt. And I really like it. It fits fantastically. And I've done, I showed one on the podcast, and then I did this one after that one. And these are all just knit, knit fabrics jersey. I haven't actually uh, washed it or um, ironed it yet. This one's going to my mum because it's actually, the yellow doesn't look, I love the mustard yellow but it doesn't look that great on my skin. And then I did this one, which I've, <clears throat> I've just got to finish these leaves. Which is quite nice. And all these fabrics I get really cheaply from Spotlight. Which I will say, like I've said before, does ha actually have a very good range of fabrics. And this is one that I've cut out that I'll be doing next. It's just, I think that's the back section. So stars, stars and stripes. <laughs> so yeah, and um, so that pattern's been getting a really good workout. Uh, what I actually read online, which was a really good tip, was to use interfacing, uh, thick interfacing, or not really super thick, but medium weight interfacing for patterns. So when you lay out your pattern and you trace them, uh, you trace it onto the, onto the uh, interfacing, like that, and then you cut the interfacing out, and then you just use this as a guide every time you go to cut. Uh, your material out because it doesn't rip um, well I mean I suppose if you pulled on it really hard it would but it's not like using paper uh, it sort of keeps a lot better and the other tip that I got uh, that I have been doing too is to use a roller cutter you know the ones that they use for patchwork quilts oh my god it's so good I was using scissors and it takes a lot longer and I was finding the edges were a bit kind of ragged from where I was uh, trying to cut out the pattern but with the um, is it rotary cutter beautiful clean edges and it just makes it so much easier to sew and it's so quick to cut stuff out um, so that's a little tip uh, I've also been um, I also uh, sewed up a t-shirt for Paul 
Um, so I got this pattern online, it's a PDF, and it's the Metro Men's T-shirt by, I think it's Liesl & Co. Uh, and again, this one has a few different um, styles that you can choose from. Um, and I, I just did this one. And I, it's the first time I've ever actually printed off a sewing pattern online in a PDF form or format. Um, and I wasn't quite sure how it would go. And I, you get a little gauge square when you print it out, so you, you can make sure that your printer is actually printing out the right size, so it will all fit. And you get like a, um, I think this one had a one inch. Um, gauge square which I measured and it was all good um, and then I s you come like it comes in this big bundle and then you've got to like put all the pieces together like you would in a jigsaw puzzle and you take them all together and then you like just um, trace your pattern out like you normally would anyway I just to test it out I actually bought some cheap um, jersey fabric for Paul and it worked really, really well. So this is it here. And it has the neckband, which I'm so pleased with. It actually, I was super worried because I thought it was going to be really wonky and, but it turned out perfectly. Again, I've got to wash this. Um, it hasn't been washed yet. But yeah, he tried it on, it fits perfectly. And it was, yeah, really, really quick and easy and cheap. Like, I think the fabric was, I don't know, six bucks or something. Six bucks a metre. And I think this was, like, two metres to buy. Had to buy, or maybe it was one and a half. I can't remember. But anyway, I have learnt doing t-shirts and other sewing projects that I really enjoy setting in the sleeve. <laughs> I was really scared to do it at first, but um, yeah, it's really fun. When it, when it all fits together, it's just like when you knit a sock and you do the gusset uh, decreases and it all kind of comes into to place. It's sort of that feeling. So yes. Um, so those are my t-shirts. And the other thing that I am so happy with that I um, sewed up is I made one of these which is a Colette design um, called Moneta and it's just a basic um, it's again jersey um, knit uh, fabric and you can do the this version here with no sleeves and it has a collar or um, no collar so same as the t-shirt it's like a, kind of like a boat neck and you can have uh, three quarter or short sleeves and I did this one and again I went to Spotlight and um, they had cheap uh, jersey fabric it was actually on special so it was good buy and I ended up making this uh, it fits so nicely it's such a nice dress um, what I really like about it and I've I know this about myself, but it's only until you start sewing that you, you realise that you'll fit how you actually fit, your clothing fits on your body. Um, but I am one size on the bottom and then one size at the top, so I'm size 10 at the top, size 12 at the bottom. Um, but And one of the patterns that I actually cut out and did, which was the Bateen pattern um, by Tilly and the Buttons, um, it didn't fit right because I had cut out the 10 top and 10 bottom, size 10 top and 10 bottom, and the, it just didn't fit. And then uh, she has a really good website actually, Tilly and the Buttons, about grading your sizes. So if you are in between size, uh, not in between sizes, if you run over two sizes, which apparently like most women do, you usually take either a size larger on top and a size smaller on the bottom or vice versa. Um, she has a really good tutorial on how to um, change the patterns. Anyway, I didn't have to do that on this one because the skirt is um, a flared skirt. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. It's little uh, whales, which is so cute. 
and it fits so nicely. Um, I've worn it already, I tested it out, and I will be making another one. Maybe, um, maybe a plain fabric, I'm not quite sure, but this will definitely be coming away on holidays with me. It's so comfortable to wear. Um, yeah, and that's been keeping me very busy on the weekends. <clears throat> um, I did want to mention too, uh, there's a really good website that's come up uh, in the last, I think it was a year or two. Um, no, I think it's a year. It's been up for a year. It's called Textilia and uh, that's T-E-X-T-I-L-L-I-A.com. I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, and it's almost, it's like a ravelry for uh, people who sew. And there's a database and you can um, put your patterns in um, for your stash. You can stash fabric. Uh, you post uh, pictures of your finished objects. Um, it has a pattern resource, which was fantastic because when I was um, going to sew, I keep saying knit, when I was going to sew the Manetta, uh, this one, I actually looked at other people's projects on Textilia and uh, there was some really good advice, particularly about what type of jersey to use because somebody had used 100% cotton jersey, which we knitters know once cotton stretch, it doesn't spring back like it wool does unless you wash it. Um, so they had mentioned that uh, if you do get cotton, you get one with um, a good amount of spandex in it, which I think it was like, I think this one, which is what I bought, I bought cotton and I think this is 5 or 10% spandex, so it springs back. So when you wear it, it doesn't fall out of shape really quickly. So yeah, I mean, it's a really, really good resource. Um, check it out. It's free to join at the moment, but um, they will be charging an annual fee of 20 US dollars which I think is fine. Um, they do, it's a husband and wife team, kind of similar to Ravelry, uh, with Jess and, Jess and, I've forgotten his name. Anyway, you know who I mean. Um, yes, yeah, so, but she, they're going to be constantly updating and adding things and I think it's really good, so. Anyway, if you're interested, go and check it out. It's any type of sewing. There's patchwork, there's needlepoint, there's um, garments, everything. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to make, I'll just talk on this really quickly. What do with it? Here it is. Uh, I wanted to like have a sort of swimsuit cover up for when we go to Greece. Uh, just for when we're, you know, having a day off on the islands. Um, this pattern just came out recently. It's by Closet Case Patterns. And it's kind of a bit, been a bit of a hit online. Uh, this is it here. There's people who have made them, which is what, I mean, the diagrams are nice, but what really catches my eye is when I see someone actually wearing it. And I saw quite a few of these ones being made, but short, not the long one. Um, and I really liked it. So that's what I've, I'm going to make. Uh, this one, short. And when I say short, to my knees. I'm not a, a mini dress wearer. Um, I think I can show you here. There's a little diagram of it on there. And I, I um, this is a PDF pattern, so I had to print it out. And as you can see, it comes like it's this massive wad. So I've got to sit down later today, actually, and put it all together so I'm, I'm right to sew on the weekend. Uh, I bought some fabric for it. Again, that spotlight. That's it there. I thought that was really nice. So hopefully next time I speak to you I'll be able to show you uh, at least a work in progress, if not a finished object of my Charlie Kaftan. So yeah, that's all my sewing. Lots and lots. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is 
my oh, so I'm going back to knitting again now. Um, to my want to cast on, uh, I've got the yarn all ready to go. So last time I spoke to, I was talking about the Marley uh, shawl by Andrea Mowry, and I was going to use the yarn that I got from Hockey as a gift when I met her last year, which is the Manos del Uruguay uh, Leo, which is this one, which I'm still using. Um, but I also was talking to you last time about the Republic of Wool uh, yarn that I got in the mail uh, in the morph colorway. Uh, anyway, these two were sitting next to each other and I just, yeah, I thought they must be knit together. So this is what, it's all cast, up, oh, cast on, it's all caked up, ready to go. So this will be a brio shawl. Um, I'll put a picture in so you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I think it's going to look really, really nice. Um, I can't wait to cast it on. And of course I do have my cardigan, which is uh, the Travel Light by Suvi Samola, which I've talked about for weeks and weeks. Um, and as soon as I get the diary cardigan off my needles, I will be casting on that cardigan. And then I suppose I have to think about what I want to take away with me when we go away on holidays. Um, I'm definitely going to take a, a sock, pa uh, sock um, yarn and what, vanilla pair of socks. I just got to pick a yarn and I was thinking a shawl and then maybe a something a bit more complex like a, a cardigan but all lightweight. But anyway, it's fun. Something to think about. Okay, I think that's everything. Uh, you should see my table. <laughs> it's like just stuff scattered everywhere and I've got my sewing stuff out and it's a bit crazy. Um, so anyway, have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful couple of weeks and um, I guess I won't be speaking to you for two, maybe three weeks. Uh, I've got to get down and see my parents before we go away. And there's other things that are sort of cropping up. Um, so hopefully I'll speak to you in um, the next three weeks. And uh, keep well. And I'll talk to you then. Bye.